outside a couple of games. So I think you're going to see a little bit of a different ball club tonight than you did this afternoon. Okay, we're going to be back to talk more about tonight's championship game right after this. And welcome back to Mackey Arena on the campus of Purdue University. We are about nine minutes away from tonight's championship game. The Lou Wallace Hornets up against the Anderson Indians. Phil, uh, first off, what do you say we talk a little bit about the final stats from Wallace's victory this morning over Benton Central? All right, Bob, uh, we've got the official statistics now from that ball game. And for those of you who don't know, Lou Wallace shot 30 of 55 from the field for a 545 shooting percentage. Hit 10 of 17 from the line and pulled down 34 rebounds. Turnovers were in pretty good shape. We only had 12 turnovers in the first half. But you know, even that's a category that we'd like to improve on against the Anderson Indians in the second game tonight. Okay, and that's a look at the final stats from this morning's ball game as you watch the Wallace Hornets warm up and get ready for this sec this championship ball game against the Anderson Indians. And Ken, uh, what about Anderson and how did they finish up this morning against Lebanon? Uh, shooting wise, they ended up shooting for, uh, 552 for the game, and uh, they uh, out rebounded Anderson uh, Lebanon by uh, 13 boards. Uh, the key rebounder, of course, is Steve Johnson, who pulled down 15, uh, scored 17 points, but he fouled out uh, late in the fourth quarter after the game was academic. Uh, the leading scorer, uh, of course, was our All-State candidate Troy Lewis. He hit for 30 points and uh, 10 rebounds. Uh, they had another guy in double figures here, uh, David Jackson, and uh, 17 points for Johnson, like I said. Okay, that's a look at Anderson and how they came out away with their victory against Lebanon, and that final score this afternoon was 74-64, and Anderson had a very commanding lead in that ball game, and we almost saw him squander it away there at the end. Well, it's kind of like uh, what Wallace did, as a matter of fact, too. Anderson had the big lead, maybe relaxed a little bit, and uh, Lebanon come up with a couple of steals, uh, a couple of traveling calls that went against Anderson, and uh, Lebanon was right back in the game, much like the Wallace game uh, that was later. Okay, we're gonna have some interesting matchups in this championship ball game, and I think the big question for the Lou Wallace Hornets is who's gonna guard Troy Lewis. I personally would probably look, since Lewis plays some of the baseline, although he does play outside. You might look for Tellus Franks to pick him up. Probably him, Bob, just for the fact that Tellus is certainly a little bit quicker than uh, Brian Asbury, and also the fact that I doubt if they want to put Johnny Ford on him, because in a matchup like that, you don't want to see Ford put in a position where he could pick up one or two fouls that could be costly to the Hornets later on in the ball game. This Lou Wallace front line and the uh, Anderson Indian front line really matches up well. It's you know it's going to be a real slugfest underneath. There's going to be a lot of bodies flying around. And I'm sure before, you, before it's all over, there's going to be uh, a lot of bodies on the floor. I'm interested to see what uh, Steve Lewis, Steve Johnson's going to do. He, he picked up some early fouls uh, against the shorter Lebanon team. But now he's going up against uh, players that are bigger than him. And uh, not only they're bigger, but they're their body and upper body strength is a lot more than them. And I don't think he's going to be able to be sweeping the boards off like you saw earlier here, just for the simple fact he's going against some big boys underneath. That's right, Kevin. I think, uh, you know, both teams are going to be facing the club now. There again, it's, you know, pretty much matched up evenly. The games earlier today, it was, you know, it was a, a taller club against a smaller, you know, a slower club. Right. And, you know, they were able to dominate certain areas of the game, which they're not going to be able to do tonight. So they're going to have to be looking for more team play, more ball control, I think. Um, and again, we're going to have to cut down the turnovers. Anderson turned the ball over 14 times in the second half of their game earlier today. I think most of those come in the fourth quarter, too. That's right. That's what allowed Lebanon to get back in the game. They're down, they were down by 16 with three minutes to go. One minute to go in the game, Lebanon had already cut that lead to six. And it was because of the fact that Anderson just kept turning the ball over. If they turned the ball over against New Wallace, they might be going back to Anderson with some pretty long faces tonight. I think the crowd will be too, like I was saying earlier. It's an Anderson crowd here tonight, but they're used to playing. They, they like to, they get the big crowds down at Anderson. As a matter of fact, they won the regional there against all Western uh, in front of 9,000 fans at the Wigwam, as they call it down there in Anderson. That's right, but I've heard stories too from coming up from Indianapolis that, you know, the experts down there who picked this game, a lot of them are saying the Hornets had the edge. Well, crowd or no crowd, 
I, I heard to the winner of this game will probably be favored going into Indy next weekend, which is a big statement to make right now. But uh, seeing both these teams play today, I can see why people would make that prediction. I think there might be a shooting guard down in Newcastle who might have something to say about yeah. that, though. Okay, and a big game uh, this afternoon for Steve Alford, 57 points. And, of course, the uh, Hoosier fans are happy he'll be playing his college basketball over at Indiana. We're going to be back to talk more about tonight's matchup for the championship of the Lafayette Semi-State after this. TV in St. John and a perfect matchup. I don't think you could ask for all you folks at home. If you're going to stay at home and watch the ball game, get yourself plenty of beverage because you won't want to leave this one. Nah, it's going to be a barn burner, I guess is the word you want to use for it. Uh, both teams we were talking earlier, they like to move the ball up and down the court, so I look for a lot of points tonight. Uh, I look for the score maybe uh, in the 70s in a close game, too. I, I was talking to Coach Williams from Benton Central a little while ago. And he was telling me he'd like to see Wallace when he's picking Wallace, but he's expecting a close game himself. Uh, Wallace, one thing about the uh, regionals last week, Wallace won both their games by two points, so they've been there in a close game. Uh, they know what it's like, and on the other hand, Anderson, uh, they've been here for the last six years, so they definitely know what it's all about. Okay, as I said, a better matchup you probably couldn't ask for. The Lou Wallace Hornets against the Anderson Indians. And right now, we would like to thank All in One Rentals and Sales at 5445 Broadway in Merrillville. Phone 887-6644. The good folks there provided the funding for the championship pregame show. Acquisition and broadcast of this evening's championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State is made possible through grants from American Savings and Loan Association of Munster, Indiana, Hooks Dependable Drugs, Pepsi-Cola Bottlers Company Incorporated of Munster, Indiana, and Don Powers Agency Incorporated of Munster, Indiana. And welcome back to Mackey Arena. Bob Alvarez, Kevin Medved, and Phil Gerbic with you for the championship game. We had two great ball games this morning. Anderson, a 74-64 winner over Lebanon, while the Hornets of Gary Lou Wallace pulled out a 70-62 win over Benton Central. Tonight's ball game promises to be a good one, and Kevin, I have to agree with you. I think we're going to see an 84-foot ball game and the points are going to be scored. We're probably up in the 70s, as you said. Right now, we're going to go down to the floor for the singing of our national anthem. And there's not many songs that you'll hear better than that, the national anthem of our country. And I'll tell you what, uh, the crowd, we discussed earlier off camera that we thought the crowd was going to be a big factor in this ball game. And fellas, surrounding us just about, I would say, halfway around the court here is nothing but a sea of red and green and those are the colors of the Anderson Indians. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. They're definitely going to have the home court advantage, I guess you could say, here in Lafayette. But yeah, I don't think it makes too much difference now when you get to this point. Ross knows what they have to do. They've they played 25 games this year now. They, they play against hostile crowds. They're down here for one purpose, that's to win this game. They're going to put the ball in the hoop and stop the other team from doing it. That's the bottom line. Well, you're right there, Kevin. You cannot argue that fact. You know, the Hornets had five ball players and double figures in this afternoon's win over Benton Central. And I think it's going to be balanced scoring that will probably take the Hornets, hopefully, to another win this evening, Phil. That's right, Bob. It'll be balanced scoring. Plus, also, when Anderson goes into their full court press, and Wallace's big men who are playing up front or on the half court line are going to have to watch out. They're going to have to come back and help out if they need to. That's one of the things that they really weren't doing this afternoon. They weren't executing well when they were being pressed in by a man-to-man -man full court. And if they don't do it, their guards are just not going to be able to bring the ball up. And that's one thing that uh, we're going to have to watch is the pressure. Anderson likes the pressure so, and over the entire court from the beginning to the end of the ball game. And as you said, Wallace did not handle that pressure very well in this afternoon's ball game. Another thing I think you have to, have to look forward to tonight is see what kind of whistle we have. We're going to have a slow whistle. I think that might favor Wallace a little bit. Wallace got a, they have a, definitely a stronger bench, and they're a little bit more physical than Anderson. But if we have uh, the quick whistle like we saw the first two games, 
That might be hurting on, uh, for Wallace tonight. And now the big roar there, you get a look at the Wallace Hornets as they come out of the dressing room and a lot of booze you hear, but yet in the background there's a lot of cheers. The Hornets do have a lot of folks here from Northwest Indiana. They had a police escort from the Gary's Finest to come over here to Mackey Arena, but as Ken said, this is kind of Anderson's home court. And it will be interesting to see which way the Lebanon and the Benton Central fans go as this game progresses. Yeah, I think it's a little too early right now. I'm taking a look here at the Lebanon fans and the Benton uh, Central fans. They're really not too sure who they're going for now. I think they're gonna wait, get it caught up in the game, and see who makes the big play right away or the big slam dunk. Then I think that'll pick up the fans a little bit on both sides. Well, right now, the Wallace fans are uh, going crazy. L-dub, L-dub is what you hear in the background, and that stands for Lou Wallace. I think I heard that cheer last night about 2 o'clock in my hotel room. I don't know where it was coming from. Well, it was coming from the uh, Wallace fans, and your broadcast uh, booth here this evening is staying over at the Union here on the campus of Purdue, and things have been pretty crazy there this afternoon following Lou Wallace's win, and I'm sure tonight if the Hornets pull this one out that things uh, will be even crazier. We might be right in the thick of things ourselves, too. Well, we're going to see what's going to happen after this championship game. And, of course, uh, it's been a long day for us, and we're probably going to wind things out a little bit this afternoon. Now we're going to go down to public address announcer for the introduction of tonight's starting lineups. Brother, we've got a battle here coming on our hands. You just saw Brian Asbury. I don't want to say he's a little cocky. I would say he feels extremely confident and feels very good about this ball game. Okay, let's take a look at Anderson's starting lineup. And they'll line up this way. David Jackson and Scott Lewis will be at the guard. Steve Johnson will take control of the middle. John Harder and Troy Lewis are your forwards. For the Lou Wallace Hornets, they will go once again with Troy Douglas at one of the guards. Renee Glover will also start at guard. Brian Asbury will be in the center. Tellus Frank and Johnny Fort are your forwards. And we are ready for the tip-off of this afternoon's, this evening's championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State. The Lou Wallace Hornets and the Anderson Indians. Look for a high-scoring affair, folks. Buckle down yourselves in your chairs, because this is definitely going to be an exciting ball game. Asbury's got fire in his eyes, Bob. He's ready to play. We're set for the opening tip. Controlled by Anderson. 13 is Scott Lewis. David Jackson is number 15. There's Troy Lewis, number 23. Kind of a surprise. Uh, Douglas is guarding Lewis. Giving up a couple inches in height there. I think uh, Coach Smith wants to feel out and see how he's going to do it. 
And Lewis immediately puts it up for the first two points. Number 34 is Johnny Fourth. The Hornets want the inside game. Asbury can't connect. Rebound John Harder. That's Troy Douglas on Lewis. Harder goes back outside. Lawson a straight man here. David Jackson. That's Harder's number 41. 13 is Lewis. Jumper, no good. Asbury high of the rebound. Got the break. Wallace fast break. Johnny Fort. He's got it. Yeah, he used the body well. Well, you can see what Wallace wants to do tonight. They come out here off the first break and they'll go out running. 13 is Scott Lewis. Renee Glover's on him. Troy Lewis is number 23. Troy Douglas is on him. Turnaround, no good. Rebound, fought for. Johnny Fort. Good hands by Johnson. Took the ball right away from Fort. Fort wanted the basket, but Johnson with the hands. Got ourselves a 2-2 ball game. We've played close to two minutes here. The championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State live here on Channel 50. No foul called. Batted out of there by Franks. Anderson still controls. Jackson, 15 jumper. No. Lewis looks like he's trying to post Coops underneath, which is a great move. He's got about three inches on him, and Heighton's a good leaper. Franks, baseline, nothing there. Go back outside to Glover. He'll take the outside jumper, nothing. Wallace with just one shot on the offensive end. Anderson quickly down court. 13 is Scott Lewis to Jackson to Harder. Harder had the shot. I think he should have taken that. Inside, we're going to have a foul. Troy Douglas gets nabbed with his first personal foul. That's the first team foul. Troy Douglas with a lot of work in his hands trying to stay with Lewis. Yeah, but you know what? They can put uh, Douglas on him now, maybe switch later over a little bit of Ford, and then maybe go with Tellus, and maybe try to wear him down a little bit. Make the kid work with, uh, without the ball. Deny him the ball the whole game. Johnson can't hit from short range. Tell us Franks clears. The Hornets want to run it. Glover's going to slow it up, though. Wait for the offense. It's going to be interesting to see what Frank does tonight. He's got uh, John Harder on him, who did a great job on David White in the first game. Well, Franks put up the kind of shot that we haven't seen him shoot up this year in the ball games that we've seen. Now he's got a nice soft touch. He kind of threw up a little brick there on that play. Good ball movement by Anderson. <laughs> Steve Johnson gets two. Hornets quickly down court. Troy Douglas. I got it right back in a hurry. That's a, that's a, we're seeing what we expected, Bob. 84 football game. Harder's going to break it up court. Talking to, to Coach Hell this morning, he's telling me uh, Harder's not really playing at 100% because he's had the flu bug. Turnover. Glover in control. He'll pull up for the jumper. No good. And you notice that time, Franks, Asbury, and Fort did not even cross the half-court line. Evidently, they knew that shot was coming. Johnson. So Johnson now has four. Anderson's out on top, 6-4. Franks, Franks has taken a shot. Asbury's taken a shot. Johnny Fort's put one up. Baseline, Douglas, no, back out front to Glover. Anderson in the zone, packing it in tight. Nice pass, nice dish off there. Glover drove the lane, saw it was, was blocked, and he just dished it off to Asbury for the little bunny. David Jackson's number 15, he's working the baseline. We're gonna have another foul. That's two now on Troy Douglas, and Coach Earl Smith's gonna go to the bench. Dwayne Coops is gonna get ready to come into this ball game. Now we'll probably see someone else guarding uh, Lewis. Okay, we've got a timeout. We've got a timeout with four minutes left to play in the first quarter. The score is six apiece. We'll return to Mackey after this. St. John. We have ourselves a six to six ball game with four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Your referees for this evening's championship ball game, Troy Ingram. And Wayne Van Sickle. Kevin, it's been the ball game we figured it would be. That's, that's what everybody expected. As uh, soon as somebody gets the ball, you're going you're to see them going up and down the court. Some of them players can get down there with about four dribbles the length of the court. So, yeah, that's what we're expecting to see here now. Okay, Jackson will trigger it inbounds here for Anderson. 
They go to Scotty Lewis, who's going to bring it back out on top. We got Dwayne Coops now is on Troy Lewis. We'll watch that matchup. Jackson from 15, yes. He has his first two points of the ball game. And Anderson leads it 8-6. I'd like to see Wallace go more inside to Franks. He's getting the inside position. Glover rebounds his own basket, but now it's Anderson on the break. Lewis. Nice block, nice block. Clean block by Dwayne Coops. As Scott Lewis went up for the shot, Coops is right there to greet him. So it's going to be out of bounds. Anderson, there's a look at number 12, Dwayne Coops. Fine defensive play. Renee Glover's going to sit down. Calvin Calvin Douglas enters the game for the Wallace Hornets. We'll see how this affects the matchup. This puts a little pressure now on court Coach Held. They've got the Wallace has got their big lineup now, and now that brings Ford out to uh, at the guard position. We're, uh, they did well this afternoon. They ran up a couple of uh, uh, runs of uh, eight and ten points uh, with uh, him playing guard. Douglas plays well off the bench, and he's coming off the bench right now. We'll see how he can contribute. It's eight to six. Anderson, 3:21 left to play here in the fourth, first quarter. Number 34, the fourth team parade All-American for Wallace, Johnny Fort. He can't handle the ball. It's a turnover, at Lou Wallace. Yeah, I'll be looking for some screens now with Douglas. Boy, he's big as a house out there. Tough to get around him, and he, he might try to throw some screens and shake uh, Johnny Fort loose. Johnny Fort had a slow first quarter in the, in the early game. Just had two points, but came back with 10 in the second quarter. Boy, Lewis gets that basket underneath. So he now has four points. Anderson's on top by four, 10-6. I'm, I'm gonna th I think it's going to be hard for a guard to stop uh, Troy Lewis tonight. He might have a feed field day with guards on him all night. That's what you call fast break basketball. Hey, We're going to have a timeout. We're going to have a timeout as Anderson comes back with the fast break to grab a 12 to 6 lead. And we'll return to Mackey Arena after this. Here at Mackey Arena, we have Anderson out on top, 12 to 6, with 2.39 left to play in the first quarter. And the Lou Wallace Hornets are not getting any second shots in the offensive board. About right now, Anderson's playing a 2-3 zone, and really packing it in underneath, forcing the Wallace to take the outside shot. Box out real well. Wallace can only get one shot. They're not going to score. Well, this time the Hornets keep it alive. Brian Asbury with the hook. We haven't seen him take that shot yet. I don't, I don't think Coach Smith wants to see him take that shot too many more times. Chuck. Well, Wallace can't hit the outside shots, and that's what they'll need to open this game up as Anderson can't convert on the transition game. Quickly down court, nice the pass, Hornets to nice court. Pass to court. Nice play by Asbury. It's a real good play by Renee Glover, too, getting back on defense and making that steal. Yeah, the ball was lofted down court. It really wasn't a crisp pass. And Evelyn Glover to get underneath. It's 12 8 now. Anderson out on top by four. Troy Lewis, no good. Tell us Frank high with the rebound. And here's the Hornets running game. Bobby, they're letting them play. They're letting them play. And I think this is going to work to the Wallace's advantage. Up and down the court. It's a fan's game, Bob. This is what we're here for. There you go. Troy Douglas got that last hoop for the Wallace Hornets. They've cut the gap to 12 10 with a minute 40 left to play. Transition basketball at its best. You will not see a slowdown here. We're not watching Notre Dame. It's getting rough underneath there. Uh, I see a little push in there on uh, Asbury and uh, Johnson going at it pretty good underneath. Asbury with the inside move to get free but can't convert. And Anderson Harder comes up with the. Anderson's got a four on two right here. Troy Lewis will take it and he's got it. They get the ball to the, to the All-American. I'll tell you, he's as good as players we've seen this year, Bob. Troy Lewis definitely will be a candidate for Mr. Basketball. Next year, he's just a junior. He'll be back. Renee Glover, they're looking inside to Asbury, but he's being fronted. Asbury with the rebound. The soft hook will not go. Asbury keeps it alive, and he's on the back. And he knew it. He knew he got the foul. That's a third team foul on the Hornets. And we're going to have Calvin Douglas check into the ball game. Brian Asbury will probably have a seat. He has just one foul. 
Coach Smith didn't like that shot that uh, Glover put up. He says he thought that was just a little bit too much out of his uh, range. Well, you've got Scott Lewis is fronting Asbury, and Harder's playing him from behind. So unless Wallace starts hitting the outside shots, they're not going to get the ball inside. The key is going to be the outside shooting game. And they're going to have to come to uh, Mr. Frank's side. I don't think he's touched the ball too much this first quarter. No, tell us Frank's in practice told me Wednesday he doesn't mind how often he sees the ball. He just wants to win. But if he sees the ball a little more, that could be a big factor in a Lou Wallace win. The Hornets now in his own. Looks like Bob that Anderson's going to hold it for the last shot in this first quarter. 27 seconds left. Anderson is out on top by four, 14 to 10. Number 15 is David Jackson. He's being guarded by Rene Glover in the zone. And Phil, I think you're right there. 13 seconds winding down. They better keep in the face of Troy Lewis. There he is. Whoa, looked like and a walk. Look at the walk there. Oh. Going to be out of bounds. Wallace with three seconds. It looked like Lewis took a walk. Yeah, I think you're right, Bob. I think the official was screened, though, and he didn't see it. Three seconds left. And something I was thinking maybe down court. And we've come to the end of the first quarter of this evening's championship game in the Lafayette Semi-State. The score, Anderson 14, Wallace 10. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Mackey Arena for the Lou Wallace Hornets. Troy Douglas and Johnny Ford had four points apiece in the first quarter. Brian Asbury had two. Troy Lewis led Anderson with six. Steve Johnson had four. Scott Lewis and David Jackson with two apiece. Anderson leads 14-10 at the end of one quarter of play. Phil? That's right, Bob. I think Anderson is uh, set in the pace. They held Wallace to only 5 of 16 uh, baskets in the first half, which is only 31%. They're going to definitely have to improve on that if they're going to expect to pull this game out. Troy Lewis gets the opening bucket of the second quarter. Now Anderson is out on top by 6, 16-10. That's just the biggest lead of the game so far. The 14 is Renee Glover. The Hornets have to hit some outside shots here to open it up in the middle. Asbury will take it, and he's got it. Nice soft touch by Asbury. Ryan, Asbury. The ball on the floor, even though Coach Asbury. Smith's not too happy with him on the floor, but that was a good move there. Can't complain about that. Inside Troy Lewis, nobody's there, and he's good a jump ball. off. Very good call. He had his hand on the ball, Bob. Johnny Fort, and here's uh, one of your best matchups of the night right here as you look at Norm Held, the Anderson coach. Johnny Fort going up against Troy Lewis, the jump ball. I think the thing which we haven't touched on yet, like this afternoon we did, uh, the defense by uh, Anderson has been really good again. They've only given up 52 points a game. And uh, it's no, no accident that they uh, stop all from taking the ball inside. Well, as Phil said, the Hornets were just 5 of 16 there in the first quarter. You're not going to win ball games like that. And the Hornets are down by four right now, 16-12. Troy Lewis, number 23, the junior, had a fantastic ball game this morning against Lebanon. When he popped in 30 points there, he'll take the baseline jumper. It won't fall for him. Anderson gets a second shot. They're just looking to Lewis every time on the floor. They're setting him pick and screen, trying to shake him loose and let him get the jump shot off. Well, he took just about half of Anderson's shot in this uh, afternoon's win. We're going to have a foul here. Troy Douglas is picked up number three. So Earl Smith looking over the bench right now. There you get a shot of Coach Smith. Who's going to come in the ball game here? Looks like he likes number 12, Dwayne Coop. So Coop checks in for Douglas, and he'll be assigned. Nice steal there by Frank. The ball's still loose now, however. Johnny Ford kicks it, comes up with it. Referee calls the kick. Smith wanted to travel, though, and I don't blame him. Uh, he was rolling on the floor with the ball. There's another look at Earl Smith, the head coach, Lou Wallace, in his third year with the Hornets. Troy Lewis is number 23. Jackson is number 15. He's going to take a short jumper. It's not going to fall. Harder rebound. He's not going to get it. Tell us Franks gets the ball batted away when he wanted to start the fast break, but there's a foul. Foul was on number 15, David Jackson. His first. 
the first team foul for Anderson. Well, like I said, I was looking for a slow whistle tonight, but not that slow. Well, Anderson played a real clean ball game. We have 6.26 left to go in the second quarter. That's just their first foul this game. We'll see if the Hornets can trigger the ball inbounds. They get it in to tell us Frank. Number 14 is Renee Glover. The Hornets down 16-12. Johnny Fort, the All-American. Tellus Frank is where's number 41 for the Hornets. He's on the baseline. Asbury, the short jumper, good. Well, that's, uh, that's a nice basket there for him. You know, eight footer, there's nothing that defensive he can do about that. Asbury now has six. He's, he, he's canned a couple of those short jumpers. Scott Lewis is number 13. Troy Lewis is 23. He likes that shot, and that's why he, he likes it. Well, I don't think they can give him. They're going to have to do something. Uh, Collapse side him or uh, front him, make him work without the ball because he's, he's just getting open and taking that 15 footer, and that's money in the bank when he gets open for that shot. Tell us, Frank, no good. Hip, no good. Anderson controls. Frank, I'd like, I figured he might put more of a one on one move on, but he didn't. Yeah, he had one fake and he went up with it. And uh, I think that might have been his first shot of the game. I'm not sure, but he hasn't seen the ball much. Scott Lewis will put it up and hit it. Scott Lewis has fourth, Anderson by six. 2014, the Hornets are going to have to be patient, I believe. They're going to have to get the ball inside more to Asbury. Yeah, he seems to be the only one in, uh, doing any damage right now. But that's what they need to do. They need to get Frank more involved in the offense. And that's his first bucket. 2016, Anderson out on top. Lewis, we're going to have a foul on Asbury. Yeah, he got him. So matter of fact, he got him pretty good. That's the way you're going to follow. Make sure he doesn't score. Don't give him a chance for that three-point play. And I think right now I'd rather see one of the Wall of Hornets ball players step in there and take the charge. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier uh, this morning, Wallace likes to challenge the players and try to block the shots on the game. Well, we've got a timeout on the floor here at Mackey Arena where the score reads Anderson 20 and the Wall of Hornets 16. We'll return after this. And welcome back to Mackey. You're watching Lafayette Semi-State Basketball live here on Channel 50. Phil, while we were during the break, you made the point that the Hornets got to get more movement on offense. That's right, Bob. The big men uh, underneath are just camping out down low. Uh, the last basket that Asbury got, and the reason he got it was because he set up down low, broke to the inside, and they hit him with a nice pass, and uh, he had an eight-foot turnaround jump shot. Well, Troy Lewis is going to be at the free throw stripe here with 4.55 left in the second quarter. Anderson, after the free throw, now leads 21 to 16. That's Lewis's first free throw of the game. He's a 79 percenter on the season. He cans them both. He now has 12 points. Anderson has a six-point lead. Now, Wallace might need somebody to start scoring from the outside. they got to open up uh, the middle there, but they have to have somebody hit from the outside. Uh, Anderson's just collapsing on Wallace's big man. Every time one of them gets it, they get three or four ball players around him. Tell us Frank now has two hoops in this one. We're going to... Thomas came up with a steal there, too. He deflected it away. I'll That's tell it. you what, David Jackson's doing a good job on Johnny Fort. Well, he's uh, talking to Coach Held. He was telling him he's, he's their best offensive player, and he's always assigned to the best offensive guard. Ball goes inside. To Larry Lane, who just checked into the ball game, he gets his first basket. We have ourselves a 24-18 Anderson lead with 4-18 left in the second quarter. Frank's now working the near side. I think you see that Frank is starting to move up a little higher now, and they're giving a little more, more elbow room to go one-on-one. -on -one. Wallace still can't hit the outside jumper. Lane comes up with the loose ball. Three-on-one, Bob. Troy Lewis. Troy Lewis. He has 14. That's the biggest lead of the game for Anderson. Eight points right now. And Anderson hasn't missed a shot in the last four trips down the court. Brian Asbury wants the shot. He's got it to glass. I believe they got to get it into Asbury. He's got the hot hand right now. Asbury. Now Asbury's been scoring, and Frank has scored a little bit now here, but uh, Johnny Ford is what we need in the office. We need him to score a little bit from the outside and uh, open up that zone, maybe drive a little bit towards the middle and dish off. You're right, Johnny Ford has not been involved in the Wallace Hornet offense as, at all as a, as a handler of the ball or a shooter. 
Well, Frank tried to make a steal there, missed it, and left a three-on-one for uh, Anderson, and they came away with the easy basket. Steve Johnson now has six. There's Port with the fall away, no good. Wallace with just one shot, and there's a foul on Asbury. That is three fouls on Brian Asbury. Johnny Fort forced one. That wasn't a very good shot at all, Bob. The Wolves didn't have a chance to set up underneath. They could not get good offensive rebounding position. What it mounted, or what came out of it was a third foul on Asbury. Calvin Douglas is going to enter the ball game for the Waller Hornets. Before the game, we talked about Steve Johnson and his force on the backboards, and he really hasn't been a force yet here in the rebounding category. Yeah, now he's, uh, he's playing up against uh, people his side, like, like he was this morning. Well, Johnson, he had the big advantage. Johnson misses the free throw. The Hornets with a chance to cut into this lead and make a six points. Calvin Douglas, and we're going to have a foul on Tellus Frank. He got caught pushing there. He got caught pushing Larry Lane. Larry Lane strapping you stop for this afternoon. Not afraid to mix it up with anyone. Well, that's 16 fouls, 17 fouls on the Wallace Hornets. So once again, Anderson's going to be at the line. There you see Coach Smith talking with Calvin Douglas. Number 43, Larry Lane's going to be at the charity stripe where he's hitting 72% on the year. It's a nice look at the six foot five inch, 175 pound sophomore. Takes his time. A lot of noise here, Bobby. A lot of noise tonight. Larry Lane has his third point. Anderson now leads 29 20 to Wallace Hornets. Find themselves down by nine. They can make a double figure here. Not quite. Johnny Fort with the rebound. Hornets have to get a bucket this time down the court. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, zip on the hands of Fort and let him uh, maybe do a little one-on-one -on -one and maybe get something off. They need some scoring out of him. The important thing is that they're down by nine now and they can't get it all back in one shot. They're going to have to be patient, work for the good shot, chip away at the lead a little at a time. Nobody for the Hornets on the offensive rebound as Calvin Douglas pulled up, put one up from long range. So the Hornets have lost some of their rebounding power. We're going to stay right here. And a big roar comes up from the Anderson crowd. The Indians are out on top by a score of 29 to 20. Phil, a very good point made by you. The Hornets can't get uh, frustrated right now because they're not going to get it back with just one shot. The shots aren't dropping right now from outside. You know, we've seen Wallace throughout the season, and we know they're a better shooting team than what we've seen so far. They're just going to have to be patient. They're going to have to work with a good shot. As I said, they're going to have to whittle down that lead a little at a time. I wouldn't be surprised now if Coach L for Anderson might decide to pull it out a little bit, maybe run off some time on the clock. They've got a nine-point lead right now, and, you know, he might feel comfortable taking it in with the nine- or ten-point lead. Well, of course, if they pull the ball out, they're going to be looking for the easy baskets underneath, and Wallace is susceptible to that. And we saw the Merrillville Pirates do that very well in that camp or the first game of the regional over there in Gary. Uh, okay, uh, Wallace, uh, it's a little, little stale right now. They don't seem to be uh, in uh, the offense completely. Somebody wants to... Uh, go one way and somebody wants to go another way. I think they're just a little bit confused now and I, well, partly it's because of Anderson defense. Well, Brian Asbury's on the bench with three fouls and he was providing a lot of the offense. He's got eight points. He's Wallace's leading scorer of this ball game and Phil, uh, you are exactly right. Anderson's going to hold it out front for a little while. Looks like they're going to spread it out. They're going to look for the, the, the take the good shot underneath so they can get it, but they're not going to take any foolish shot. Now they're going to try to get the ball to Lewis. They're going to spring him loose, hopefully on a pick somewhere so he can get the ball right around the dotted line there because he's awful tough to stop one on one. And that was, that's the matchup we thought we would see. Tell us Franks is on Lewis right now. Six foot nine inch against six foot five. Anderson very patient. Frank with the near steal. It's off the foot of Lewis, but Anderson remains in control. A minute 50 left to go here in the first half of play. Anderson out on top, 29-20 inside to Lewis. He had Franks in his face, and he can't get it to fall. Johnny Ford starts the fast break for Wallace, but loses control. Uh, I don't know, I think he caught a foul there. Ford was bumped pretty well. 
Well, I'll tell you what, Johnny Ford has not played a very good ball game at all here in this championship ball game. He has just four points, but really has not been involved with the offense. When a Glover will hit from the outside, that's his first bucket of the ball game. Somebody's going to have to pick it up from the outside without Asbury on the inside. And once again on the drive, you saw the Wallace Hornets going up to try to block the shot rather than maybe stand there and take the charge. But they do get the ball back, and it's 29-22. The Hornets are within seven with the 115 left to play here in the first half. Another big possession for Wallace. Number Johnny Ford and Jackson going at it underneath. Calvin Douglas won't get it to fall. Nobody on the boards for the Hornets. Wow. Troy Lewis comes up with the rebound. Anderson's continuing to get good defensive position on, underneath. Not giving Wallace more than one shot. Well, I think this matchup with Tellus Frank on Lewis is going to be one that Coach Smith of the Wallace Hornets is going to have to stay with. We're going to have a foul called on Dwayne Coops, and that'll be number one on him. And that'll send David Jackson with a foul stripe. It wasn't a very good foul, Bob. He came in from uh, the blind side on him, crashed right into him. Really no chance at a steal. An obvious call. Well, Jackson's hitting 70% from the line this year as a team. Anderson's hitting 69%, so they're a very good free throw shooting team. Jackson looking for point number three here. He hit a basket in the first quarter. He's not scored here in the second quarter. He won't score here now. Wallace controls. Got a two on one. Glover will pull it up. He's got it. You can see he made that too, Bob. He had a two on one there. It looked like he had scored open on the left wing, but didn't get it to him, but he made the basket. Well, the Hornets are now within five. 35 seconds left to play. A nice move by Tellus Frank as he clogs up the lane. Wallace has to be patient. They're going to go for the last shot, it appears. Johnson telegraphed that last pass. I think everybody here in the stadium knew he was passing it to, to uh, Laney. Could be a big basket here if the Hornets could get it. Uh, two points here would bring him back within three points at halftime. Plenty of time then to regroup. Pull it out in the second half. Frank got away with the walk. And, Johnny uh, Fort. He made this run with uh, Asbury on the bench. Okay, we finished 16 minutes of play here in the championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State at the end of the first half. Anderson leads Lou Wallace 29-24. We'll be back in a moment. Acquisition and broadcast of this evening's championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State is made possible through grants from American Savings and Loan Association of Munster, Indiana, Hook Dependable Drugs, Pepsi-Cola Bottlers Company Incorporated of Munster, Indiana, and Don Powers Agency Incorporated of Munster, Indiana. Since 19... And welcome back to Purdue's Mackey Arena. We hope you're enjoying our telecast of the championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State coming to you live on Northwest Indiana's leader in sports television, Channel 50 at the half. Anderson leads by a score of 29-24. Kevin, your observations here this first 16 minutes of play. Well, I think Anderson's played a very disciplined game. Uh, they've run when they've had the advantage. Unlike Wallace, Wallace will try to run, push the ball up court when they really haven't uh, had the chance to, and throwing the ball away. Whereas, for the most part, Anderson, they, when they ran the ball, and they, they could see they've got the break, they take the ball to the hoop and score, and if not, kick it back out. Uh, the, I think the defense, evidently, uh, Anderson's defense is really collapsing in the middle, really put, holding down Franks and Asbury when he was in there, and Wallace is a lack of scoring from the outside. Johnny Fort is going to have to start hitting from the outside or driving the lane and dishing off just to open up the defense. Uh, Anderson, I think, is, gets a lot of credit for it because they're, they're playing a great first half. Not too many turnovers. Uh, Wallace, with, uh, with a few, we don't have the final stats on uh, turnovers in the first half, but Wallace, has, they've got to play a little smarter game. Well, you're right there, Kevin. Wallace has not had the outside shooting when they've needed it. Consequently, Anderson has been able to sag down inside on Asbury and on Tellus Frank and therefore they haven't been able to get the ball inside. When they have gotten it down deep to Asbury, he's responded. He scored eight points 
here in the first half of play. So the key for the Hornets is going to have to be to get some outside shooting. But once again, I'll be interested to see how this matchup is going to work out with Tellus Frank and Troy Lewis. Now, Frank guarded Lewis for about the last two minutes of the first half, and that was when Brian Asbury was on the bench. All right. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that matchup develops. I have another little item here. Uh, Coach uh, Hell, Norm Hell team haven't lost a game here at Lafayette. They've, uh, they're undefeated on this floor. In uh, 79, they won the semi-state here, uh, only to lose the championship game down in uh, India against Marion. In uh, 81, uh, they'd won the semi-state here, and uh, that year they lost the championship game to Vincent. So uh, Coach Smith and the Wallace Hornets going up uh, up against quite a bit tonight. Uh, a little uh, crowd factor, and uh, for the fact that the psychological advantage working for Anderson, where they haven't lost on this floor yet. A lot of tradition behind this Anderson ball club, and they like uh, Norm Held likes those odd years, as you just said, 79 and 81. He was down there in the state finals, 1983. Of course, he would like to repeat that. We're going to take a break, and uh, we'll be back with some more halftime activity right after this. Library. And welcome back to Mackey Arena. The cheer is from the Lou Wallace fans who haven't had much to cheer about here in the first half. They find their Hornets down by five right now, 29 to 24. We can have a look now with some of the halftime stats, and Phil will throw it over to you. All right, Bob. Uh, Anderson in the first half hit on 13 to 24 field goal attempts for a 54% uh, clip. For the line, they were three of six. They had six turnovers and only 10 rebounds. Wallace, on the other hand, hit on 12 of 31 attempts for 39%. Wallace did not take a free throw in the first half, which is really unusual. As far as turnovers, New Wallace had five and they had 15 rebounds. One key thing that we're going to have to really watch in the second half is the fact that Lou Wallace has two players with three fouls on them. That's Brian Asbury and Troy Douglas. Anderson, on the other hand, committed only one personal foul in the first half. And that's a very clean ball game being played by these Anderson Indians. Louie, we're going to keep it right here until we start the second half. So we'll keep it here for the remainder of this minute 45 left in the halftime. We won't break to go back to the station. We want to talk a little bit more about this first half of play. And Phil, Kevin and I were talking about the Hornets, and they didn't have the outside shooting when they needed it. And then uh, when they finally did get it inside, they found a lot of success with Asbury and, and uh, Frank. Asbury was hot, but then he picked up his third foul and had to have the seat. The Hornets need uh, Asbury in this game in order to beat the Indians, and we're all sure of that. But what I really liked about their play in the first half was when Tellus Frank went to the weak side, they got him the ball twice. Both times, he worked his man one-on-one, -on -one, took it down under, and was able to score. That's the kind of play that they're going to have to have in the second half to pull it out. Ken, uh, I think you just heard a score over the public address system here. Yeah, I did. Uh, I don't know. It sounds like uh, I guess it was Newcastle uh, had 26, and uh, I think they're playing uh, with the Washington. Let's check our seats right here. Uh, Newcastle was going up against Connorsville. Well, Connorsville, and it sounded like 46 to 26 at the half. Newcastle was Newcastle, down. Yeah, that's what I saw. That's what it sounded like. So Newcastle finds themselves in a bit of trouble. If you just joined us, uh, Marion beat Valparaiso 49-47. Washington beat Floyd Central 71-70 at Terre Haute. And while at Indianapolis, Newcastle beat Broad Ripple 79-64 earlier this afternoon. Right here, we're getting ready to start the third quarter. And the score is Anderson, 29, Wallace, 24. You're watching high school basketball on WCAE-TV in beautiful St. John. We're glad that you could be with us this evening. We've got ourselves a great second half of basketball coming up. The Hornets down by five. We're set for the opening tip. It's going to be controlled by Troy Lewis. It'll be interesting to see what uh, Wallace comes out uh, differently this time. Franks is on Lewis. They're going to stay with that matchup. Jackson, no good. Wallace controls the loose ball. Renee Glover comes down for the Hornets. Baseline, good. There's a long pass on court. Oh, rejection. Rejection. 
Wallace trying to fall asleep there defensively. They scored a basket and were driving back. David Jackson stuck in behind the defense and uh, would have scored the easy layup. It wasn't wow, wow, by, Sellers Frank, by Frank. Sellers Frank picks up number two. Number one. That'll send Patrick to the charity strike. He has uh, two points in this ball game. He misses on the first one. 29-23 our score. The Wallace Hornets down by three. Troy Lewis controls another foul. Troy Lewis just took that ball away from Lene Glover. Yeah, he kept it, just had no height advantage. Kept it right out, popped it right out of his hands, and now he draws the foul. Well, right now you might be looking at a case at you know who wants this ball game more. The Wallace Hornets or Anderson, as you said, Troy Lewis took that ball right away from Teller Frank as he picks up his third foul to Brooklyn in the early going here of the third quarter. Guys, really got smooth here, Bob. So you're looking at the crowd noise, get to it another. Just take the ball from the referee and put it on. He's not going to miss his free throws, 79% on the year. Hornets down by five now, 31-26. Johnny Fort, Jackson is on him, Glover will fake it, Fort will take it from the baseline, that's going to be no good, and Anderson's on the run, Scott Lewis wisely pulls it up, Wallace with Johnson, that's Johnson, he now has eight, he's been silent but steady. Yeah, Wallace, uh, they, they special scoop again there on defense, so they, they had two guys both on the east there on the off lane. Hornets have got to get the ball inside. Or make their outside shot. Anderson on the transition. Johnson with the big rebound. That's Troy Lewis. He'll go towards the hoop. The no, I guess not. They're going to call the foul on Troy Douglas, and that'll be four on Mr. Douglas. And he's going to go to the bench. Dwayne Coots is going to check back in for the Wallace Hornets. So the Hornets have faced a little bit of foul trouble here in the early minutes of the third quarter. Yeah, they, uh, they've got, they've got two, they're two big men already up the three fouls. And uh, one of the guards is four. Uh, it's more important that the forwards, the big men, uh, Frank and Asbury, stay out of foul trouble. They can get by with uh, their guards in foul trouble, but they're going to have to have uh, Asbury and Frank in their whole game to check the rest. Troy Lewis has hit four straight from the line. He's got 18 points in this ball game. Lewis is posting up both of the big men low. And four guys collapse on him. Four guys collapse right on him. They know they're letting him take the outside shot and not hit him. And it's, no matter how uh, good you are underneath, you got four guys guarding you. It's up to score. Anderson's working the ball around here patiently. They're looking for a shot. Cross court pass. Back to Lewis. Discipline team. That's close Mountain Health teams usually are. Well, he's been here before. Harder's number 41. He's being hounded by Tellus Frank. We've got a travel, and that'll be on, Tro on uh, Scott Lewis, number 13. Troy's brother. Well, she's a basket here. They're uh, down by nine points. They're lucky there. They could have been down by 11 already. So they, they got to score here. They got to get some kind of momentum going. Asbury, the soft hook, it won't go. We've got a push off against Johnny Fort. He can't believe it. Uh, he got caught. It was a good call. Fort tried to get a little extra position in there and tried to Johnny move him out on the hip. Anderson may be going to the foul it's line very early in this ball game. And that could be a telling statistic as this game develops. It's 35 26. The Wallace Hornets find themselves by nine with 5.48 left to go. Hornets with the trap defense. No problem, though, for Anderson. Yeah, that's where it's well close to Coach Club, Bob. Uh, they do so many things right, offensively and defensively. And they're hitting all of their shots. Harder, John Harder, gets his first two points of this ball game. 37-26 in favor of Anderson. Tellus Frank wants him to work the ball his way. Outside jumper, glass no good. Coop misfires with the outside jumper. Anderson has completely dominated play here in the second half. They sure have, Bob. Uh, they're pulling every rebound down that they can, and they're making all their shots. Not down. Lewis, that's Lewis. 
Troy Lewis is on fire. He's got 20 points. Anderson jumps out front by 13, 39-26 with 506 left to play. We'll return after this. Welcome back to Mackey. The Hornets down by 13. Number 35, Johan Smith, has checked into this ball game for Lou Wallace. Dwayne Coop has a seat for the Hornets are going with Fort, Glover, Asbury, Frank, and number 35. Johan Smith, the horn is down by 13. Every possession now a big one. Asbury, short jumper, good. They got the ball inside up time. The has a little turn around, 10 foot jump shot. Here's uh, Anderson right back down. Big rebound by Smith. Big Smith was brought in to get a little more height advantage underneath. Tell us Frank won't take it from 15. Asbury will, that's short. Harder comes up with the loose ball. Yeah, he blocked up, blocked up Frank well that time. Kept Frank from getting the ball. Troy Lewis dishes it off to Harder. He's got Glover in the air. Two straight for John Harder. He now has four points. It's a 41-28 Anderson lead. 4-13 left in the third quarter. Johnny Fort, jumper. It'll go. That's what he's got to do. He's going to have to hit those shots. Got to hit those shots, open up the middle a little bit, and before that, he's got to start scoring. Boy, well, what a chance to have. Troy Lewis. He's not shy about putting up his oh, No, no oh, not at all. Troy Lewis has 22 oh, points. Oh. We've got ourselves some playground basketball now. Johnny Ford. Johnny Ford. You're all going to have to put more oh, pressure oh. on the basketball, Bob. Right now, Anderson's hitting everything they're throwing up from 15 feet. So we're going to... Well, Coops is going to come back in the ball game. Renee Glover is going to have a seat. So now you got Coops and Ford at the guard. Walk needs a couple of steals here. Make a couple of quick layups and right back in the game. Number 13 is Scott Lewis. Number 15 is David Jackson. Troy Lewis. He's got flanks on him. Let's see what he's going to deal. He'll put it up. He's going to miss it this time. Johnny Fort rebound. Stolen away, but Wallace is going to come up with a loose ball. Out of bounds, Anderson. It's a good play there by David Jackson. Took the ball right away from Ford. Ford didn't see him. And fortunately for uh, Jackson, it went off his hands and rolled out of bounds. Wallace down 43-32. 11-point lead here for Anderson. Brian Asbury, short jumper, it'll go. Now that's the shot. That he, I think he did that now three times now in about the last two minutes. Uh, they weren't getting that shot earlier, but uh, they got to keep getting that uh, shot there and let the fourth guy continue to shoot from the outside. Make it. Well, majority of Asbury's shot points have come from right there. And number 31, Steve Johnson says, hey, give me the ball once. I want to shoot some up. Foul there on Lewis. Uh, I'll tell you, Wallace can get those short jumpers and score, but they, they can't seem to stop Anderson. Uh, Every time uh, Wallace scores and gets a little closer, uh, Anderson comes right down and scores without any problems. You know what, that's just the first team foul on Anderson. They've com committed just two fouls in this ball game. And I'll tell you, these Lewis kids coming from a great basketball family. Slammer jammer! That might have done it, Bob. That might have done it. Asbury now with 14. They've cut the lead down to single digits. They needed something, they needed something to get them going. Hopefully that jam did it. Wallace has scored the last four tricks on the court also. Well, Frank now is on Troy Lewis. If he can do the job there, That'll brighten up the Hornets' chances. Ford almost took that ball off. Harder, number 41. They're going to take it back outside. David Jackson. Money in the bank, Bob. I hear that. I hear that. I don't think he misses too often. He doesn't. Every time he has the ball from that distance, that ball's going in. Asbury wants it from there. Yes. The play down there, Bob. That's the kind of stuff we usually see in front of night on Lake Space. <laughs> oh, boy. Miss Bennett, I believe. That's where myself and uh, my broadcasting team get a little exercise. We play some ball at Lake Space and on Sundays, and yeah, you never know what kind of move you're going to see there. But right now, we've seen a lot of moves by Anderson. They're on top, 47-38, 15-point lead, and a stupid foul by Dwayne Coops, his second, as he reached in against David Jackson. I made the point earlier about the Lewis brothers. Their brother Kendrick 
We saw him here in 1981 when he teamed up with Andre Morgan for a heck of an Anderson ball club that went to the state finals. So uh, I'm sure they probably have some great battles in their backyard. Oh, yeah, I bet they have some. Uh, matter of fact, I, I grew up with a family of five brothers myself, and we used to mix it up pretty well in all the sports we play. So I imagine they have their battles there. And I know you wanted to say hi to a few people tonight. I was just going to say hi to Boney out there in court if he knows who he is. I know he's checking me in the game tonight. Okay, the Hornets come up with the rebound off the missed free throw, and there's going to be a foul. They're going to go, it's going to go Wallace's way, and Lewis cannot believe it. There you get a shot of him laying on the ground. That looked like that was about the first uh, question about part of it, Wallace's way tonight. Number two off the team. It looks like he may be a little shaken up. Uh, he gets up okay. Smith is going down with a pretty good uh, head of steam, and uh, Lewis trying to step in front of him, and G.G. to draw the charge, but he didn't square up with his shoulders, and uh, they tried to block on Lewis. Well, Lewis picks up his second. That's the second team foul on Anderson. 47-38, the Horn is down by nine with a minute 29 left here in the third period. Johnny Fort gets the inbounds. He's going to shoot it up. It will fall. He's out of little Bob. That's, that's up to seven now. And a uh, minute 23 to go. Hotel might try to Johnny work that last shot here. Ford. Johnny Ford has suddenly come alive for the Hornets. He's got himself back in the ball game. The Anderson fans are up off their chairs. That's Johnson, and he gets hammered. Yeah, well, Smith made sure he wasn't going to score. He uh, fouled him how you're supposed to when they go up. Don't give him a shot for a free throw play. Steve Johnson got hammered. He'll uh, see the charity strike for his first time in this championship ball game. Anderson's out on top by seven. Johnson shooting 60% from the strike on the year. We're going to have a substitution now for Anderson, Larry Lane. Harder going out. Got a slip in earlier. Harder, just not 100%. He got a little bit of a flu bug. I think uh, Coach Hell wants to give him a little rest. Uh, He's got a minute seven left to play here in the third period. Johnson cans the first one. He's got 11 points here in the ball game. Troy Lewis leading all scores with 24. Brian Asbury leads the Hornets with 16. Second one is good. So now the Hornets are back down by nine with a minute left to go here in the third period. to try to take over now. Maybe trying a little bit of one-on-one -on -one play here as he did this afternoon when uh, he scored about 19 points and just off the five assists on the game. It, there's a foul on Anderson. David Jackson gets his second foul of the ball game. Coach Earl Smith shouting out some instructions. to have some words with Johnny Ford as Tellus Frank gets ready to inbound it. Frank goes deep to Dwayne Coop. 56 seconds left. One is down by nine. Coop's no good. Rebound controlled by Johnson. Yeah, he threw that one. He threw that ball up a little too hard. He kind of bounced it off the, off the glass, and uh, he really didn't. Uh, he kind of forced it. He didn't need to put up that shot. David Lewis underneath was wide open. They tried the alley oop inside to Scotty Lewis, but no go. Johnny Fort won't get it to fall. Nice tip Asbury. Nice Chip Asbury, they're going to count the basket? Uh, I don't know what this call's going to be. I don't know what this call's going to be. I'm not sure he knows what it's going to be. Well, Earl Smith is irate as you have him in your screen right now. Playing this case to no avail. Anderson foul on Troy Lewis, number 23. His first, number four on the team. I think what they called Bob is a foul on Troy Anderson, or Troy Lewis, but it was before the tip in by Asbury. That's why the basket didn't count. Well, the Hornets control. Johnny Fort is no good. Johan Smith rebound good. Strong follow up by Smith. And he had that ball strapped in his hands, and he still forced it up in the basket. That's his first basket of this ball game. The lead is cut back to seven. Nine, eight seconds left to play. Who's going to get the shot? I put my money on this guy. He takes it, and it won't go. Asbury and a foul. 
the hook he might get a technical. I don't know if Anderson's in the bonus or not, so it might not make a difference. We're going to keep it right here. Brian Asbury is going to go to the foul stripe. He was fouled there at the end by David Jackson, who picked up his third foul. And he's Wallace is leading free throws to an 87%. Big break for Wallace there. A couple of free throws here by Asbury. He's on the clock. To make it be the back of the game, but it's down by five. That foul just put Wallace in the bonus, too. The Hornets in the bonus. Asbury, there you have a good look at him. The first one doesn't fall, and that's all he's going to get. So at the end of the third quarter of the championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State, the score is Anderson 49, Wallace 42. The Academy is located at 242 Ogden Street in Hammond. Welcome back to Mackey Arena. We're set for the tip-off of the fourth and final quarter of play here this evening. The Wallace Hornets are down by... 7, 49, 42. Johnny Schwartz going to jump center here. And it surprises me too, Bob. Uh, although Johnson's uh, won the tip both times in Asbury, but maybe they're looking for the quick jump out of court. And once again, Anderson controls. That's Jackson. Playground move. Won't get it to foul. Follow up. Good by Johnson. Wallace down by 11 here. They're going to have to nine now. They're going to have to just take their time. they got the whole fourth quarter. You have no sense to start forcing balls off. Well, Rene Glover, nowhere to go. He gets it back outside to Tellus Frank. Tellus is not taking a shot in the third quarter. Inside Smith. Smith playing a, playing a fine game off the bench. We didn't even see him this morning. That tells you how deep ball is. Yeah. And we're going to have a foul on Johnny Ford here on our end of the floor. Johnny picks up his second personal foul. The Hornets down by 7, 51-44. Seems as though they just can't get over that hump. Uh, they, they had it down to seven a couple of times, oh, no, but every time they score, they're trying to get back in the game. Uh, Anderson responds and comes right back and scores it, the wrong basket. The, the, the Wallace here, I think, their defense is going to have to win this game for them because uh, they have been they're having a little success scoring, but they're going to have to stop Anderson. Uh, Anderson has been getting some easy shots, and uh, Troy Lewis has been panning free throws and jump shots the whole game. Well, he's got 26 points right now. He leads all scores. The Hornets down by 9, 53-44. We've just opened the fourth and final period of play here in the championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State. Yeah, the whole uh, defense for Anderson slapped him underneath. They got him with the body. Asbury is fouled. Yeah, they got him with the body there. He deflected the ball, but uh, he caught him with his hip on the way down. He's a big free throw, too, Bob. The Wallace are going to have to try to score as much as they can without the clock running. Exactly. They can't afford to miss too many of these down the stretch. Well, Asbury right now has 16 points, and uh, he's Wallace's leading point getter here. I believe they're going to have to just shove the ball inside to Franks and Asbury. Well, that's what it looks like, Bob. Uh, Johnny Ford having kind of an off soon right now, but uh, what I said, a lot of time left, and uh, he can take over the game in a couple of minutes. As they showed in the East Chicago game and Maribel game, they've had spurts where they can come on with 10, 12 points and uh, without any time going off the clock. Anderson now in control on the offensive end. That's 23, Troy Lewis. He's working on the baseline. He's got it. He certainly isn't bad, so about putting it up. 28 points for Troy Lewis. He hit 30. In this morning's win over Lebanon. There's so, a better junior in the state, Bob. I'd like to see him. Oh, I got you there. Johnny Fort won't get it to fall. Anderson once again giving the Hornets just one shot on the offensive board. Wallace down by 10. Six and a half minutes left to play. Championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State live here on Channel 50. Got to slow the ball down now. Looking for the good shot. Posting up Lewis. He I'll won't try. get this one to fall. Smith controls off to Frank. Tell us. Doesn't like what he sees on the baseline. Glover likes what he sees, but can't get it to fall. I can't believe we don't have a foul there. Johnson was all over Asbury's back, but yeah, there is no was. call. Yeah, he sure was. Coach Smith can't believe it. He just shakes his head. Well, if there's one man who's going to spark the Hornets, he just entered the game, number 45, Calvin Douglas. Smith has a seat. We're going to have a timeout. 
A big roar from the Anderson fans. We have a timeout here with 6.06 remaining. Anderson's out on top, 55-45. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mackey Arena. Bob Alvarez, Kevin Medved, and Phil Gerbic live with you here where the Hornets are down by 10 right now, 55-45, with just 6.06 remaining to play in this ball game. We'll see what Wallace can do as number 20 checks back in the lineup, Troy Douglas. The Hornets will go with Troy Douglas, Renee Glover, Brian Asbury's on the bench, Johnny Forge in the ball game along with Tellus Frank, and Calvin Douglas. I just going to put a little bit of pressure on the ball now, maybe try to trap the ball handler, and hopefully uh, one of the big men can come up with a steal on the outlet pass. Yeah, there's a turnover, Bob. It's a surprise coming from John Carter because he's one of the smarter ball players. He knew it as soon as he threw it away. And he was expecting Jackson to break one way and he went the other. Well, the Hornets get a break. See if they can convert Johnny Fort. 20 is Douglas, Frank nowhere to go. Frank wants it underneath. Anderson's really packing it inside, though. Drive by Glover, nothing. Can't get it to drop. 538 left to play. Hornets down by 10. But we saw him down by 8 against the Roosevelt Rough Riders with 3 minutes to play. Steal. Right hand by Fort. Got the 3 on 2 and a nice pass. Douglas and, and a, a foul. And a block. Troy Douglas gets his eighth point of the game. It cuts the lead to eight. We're also going to have a foul called on Harder. So a chance here to cut it to seven now. Uh, Wallace is going to probably have to score most of the time to get the ball now, Phil. Definitely, Kevin. I think you want to watch out for um, Anderson. Last two times down the court, they've turned the ball over. You remember the first game today against Lebanon. Anderson turned the ball over 14 times in the second half. Yeah, not a very good stat. It looked like rain tipped over the foul line there, Bob. <laughs> Sometimes it'll creep up on you. Yeah, I guess. 55-48 ball game. Frank's almost coming up with the steal. Johnson gets hammered, but there's a foul by Lane. His fifth point, and the lead is back up to nine. 57-48 Anderson. Douglas had a notion from the baseline. Renee Glover, no. Troy Douglas inside. It won't, it won't, it won't fall. Johnny Fort rebound. He's got to get it up and in. He does. He was trying to draw the foul that time, too. Johnny Hopefully make it another three-point play. 12 points for Johnny Fort. The lead once again cut to seven. Wallace cannot cut it back to more than five. Wallace wants to trap the ball up top. Uh, Anderson looks uncomfortable with this offense, so three times now they've come down in it. Uh, twice they had turnovers, and it's the third time. And once they scored on the lucky rebound basket. Well, the Hornets have had their chances here. Renee Glover a little bit too excited. And the Hornets turn it over. 4.27 left to play. Wallace down by seven. That was a big turnover there, Bob. Uh, they made a nice steal. They had the break. So they cut it, cut it to five with uh, over four minutes left. Uh, we'll still see. We'll have to see what happens now. Okay, Scott Lewis is number 13. The Hornets are going to pick him up high and try to trap him, but this defense has not bothered Anderson at all. Anderson's not getting the movement out of their squad like they did earlier in the game, Bob. Yeah, the movement now is not towards the basket. It's just to keep the ball, it looks like. Just to try to keep the ball away from Wallace and run some time off the clock. Inside the Lewis block, it's rejected by Tellus Frank, but Anderson controls. Time winding down, 3.50 left. Hornets down by seven. Troy Lewis, nothing. Scott Lewis controls the outside. Steal by Glover. Oh, brother. Oh, he better make it, Bill. Very bad shot. Very bad shot by Glover. I can't believe it. There's a lot of time left. No need to pull up on that ball there. No, no need at all. This name happened to be Isaiah Connor. No. And into the stands, Troy Douglas goes a few rows up. I think he stepped down and had a coke there from that uh, Lebanon player. 
for Troy Douglas, and we're going to have a timeout here. We're going to have a timeout with 3.17 left to play. Anderson is out on top, 57.50. We will return after this. And welcome back to Mackey. We hope you've enjoyed the two at morning ball games, and we hope you're enjoying this evening's championship ball game. The Wallace Hornets trail Anderson by 7, 57, 50. We have three minutes and 17 seconds left to play in this Lafayette semi-state championship game. And the Anderson Indians want to hold on now for yet another trip to the finals in Indianapolis. Uh, this game right now is taking on a lot of picture like uh, the ECR game. Three minutes left to go in the game, down by seven points. Uh, so we know it's not hopeless. Well, hopefully Wallace can also pull this one out. Scott Lewis is on the baseline. Nothing there. He goes inside the lane. He gets his seventh point. The lead is nine. Hornets down by nine. Nice pass by Lewis. Johnny Fort won't fall. Nobody's on the board for Wallace. Nobody's on the board and Fort draws the foul. I think it's time for Asbury to come back into the ballgame, Bob. They really need him underneath. Well, Phil, you called it. Asbury's checking in right now. Johnny Fort, foul number three. Brian Asbury's going to check in the game. We're going to see who's going to sit down. That's a lot of quiet here, Bob. Tell us Frank is going to sit down. I'm not sure if I agree with that move by Coach Smith. Well, I'm not too sure I agree either, but uh, Coach Smith got him here, so I guess we can't really question his strategy, but he pulls out his big man, tell us Frank. I think he's just getting him out there. I think he wasn't happy with uh, Frank not going to the board on the offensive uh, end here. I think you see him right back in the game in a minute. The Hornets once again get another chance here. Fort can't control. Wallace is playing very reckless basketball. I think Coach Smith took Tellus out just to add some quickness to the team, but it looks like he's going to come right back in. Well, the Hornets have had their chances. 2.30 left to play. Troy Lewis underneath. It's good. He has 30. He's matched his point total for this afternoon. Johnny Fort jumper won't fall. Fort rebound. Gets it back up. The head fake. No. Lewis is 30th point, and that's just an average game for him, Bob. He's yep. just under 30 on the year. That's his average, 29.5. Nothing spectacular, but I mean, that's the 30 point game for him. It's uh, just another day's work on the slot mine. <laughs> We've got a timeout, but we're going to stay right here. Anderson is out on top now by 11, 61 to 50. Phil, the Hornets will definitely have their chances to get back in there. Bob. The Wallace Hats were stuck on 57-50 there for two trips down the court. They had a chance to cut out down to three, make a ball game out of it. They came down there over anxious, threw the ball away the first time, took a bad shot the second time. Now that put them in this position. They allowed Anderson to get back into their ball game, to firm up a little better shooting eye on the basket, and all of a sudden now, the Wallace finds themselves down by 11. I think uh, Kenneth will have to go to Anderson. They definitely played the better game. Up to these last two minutes to go now, they've proved they've been the better team so far. Uh, they've done everything they've had to do uh, defensively and offensively, and they know they've got the ball to their uh, franchise, Troy Lewis. And when he gets the ball out of him, like I said, he's been scoring that well. And uh, Wallace has just been a step behind the whole night of state. And Anderson has also done a great job on the boards on both ends of the court. And Wallace has played in spurts a lot this season. And when you get to play very good teams like you're doing tonight with Anderson, you don't play in spurts and expect to win. But Hornets are down 61-50 with 2.16 left to play. We've got some uh, fans who aren't minding their manners shouting behind us. Yeah, I think uh, they might have uh, a little bit too much fun before they got here tonight. Well, let's uh, end it right there. Johnny Ford misses the first free throw. Three dips. He misses the second. Asbury with the loose ball. He cans it. Brian has Brian 19. Asbury. The lead is back to nine. And we've got a foul here on Tellus Frank down on the end, other end here to our immediate left. He fouls Johnson. 
And he fought him all right, so I put him down pretty hard there, Bob. I think he stepped on his shoe. No, it's right. Whatever he did, I'm sure that tells just wanted to make sure that they didn't score. Well, he didn't. I think you got to give a lot of credit to Brian Asbury. He's played a fine game here. Oh, yeah, he has played a fine game. And I think uh, he's going to have a fine career in college uh, at uh, Western Kentucky. Johnson at the line. Johnson started, I think, Bobby. Missed, that, missed everything on that first free throw. He's played the whole game here. He played a great game, as a matter of fact. He's got 15. Johnny Ford's going to try to do it himself. And he did. 14 for Johnny Ford. Ford. Nice fake. Asbury coming out swinging the elbow a little bit unintentionally. Well, Brian's got to be a little disgusted right now as you see a coach of Earl, a shot of Coach Earl Smith or Wallace. They might, they might run a little play here again, Bob, off the tip. Look for uh, either Glover or maybe even uh, Coops to burn down the court. We're going to have a foul called on Coop no, or I Douglas. No, I think... I think I called that one on Lane. I think Troy Douglas is the one who got fouled, Bob. Okay. They'll try to run that play like they did this afternoon game, but I think uh, Anderson was ready for it. They got their men out there to try to block the tip, but uh, they fought him anyway. So here's two, po two free throws uh, potentially coming up with uh, no time in the clock moving. Big free throws here, too. Douglas can hit these two, bring Wallace within six. Well, just forget that. Wallace almost had a chance to get the ball back there, but it went out of bounds off Keller's Frank. So the Hornets are down right now by eight. It's 62-54 with a minute 48 left to play. It's a bad pass, but a great save. A great save by that. I'm sorry, that was Lewis. The block by Frank. Wallace on the transition. Got to put it down. Fort. Johnny Fort. 16 points. That's from Mr. Fort. Fort. Troy Lewis on the other end. He has 32. 32 for Troy Lewis. We got some blacktop basketball here. That's the way we like to see it being played, too, Bob. I Troy, think he'll slow it down now. Troy Lewis comes out with the loose ball. He's gonna run some time off the clock. Too much dribbling, Bob. There's a travel they didn't call. Lewis got away with the travel, Bob. No question about it. He's on the floor and he, tur he turned over. Coach Smith is off the bench. That's what he wants. Brian Asbury and all the commotion is going to get nailed for his fourth foul. The Hornets are down by eight. 64-56. We've got 106 left to play here in the championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State. Basket, two free throws there, and just lead up to 10. And uh, Wallace is really going to have to work that out for him. Lane is at the line for Anderson. He's got seven points here on the ball game. He's one out of one from the charity strike. Make it two out of two. He's the blue collar worker on this team, Bob. He hits the boards, he plays the defense, and he's a scrapper. He does the thing that uh, don't show up on the staff. But Coach Held appreciates what he's done today. We're going to keep it right here for this timeout. And the Wallace Hornets obviously a bit dejected. They walked off the court while Anderson ran off the court. So basically that's your difference in these two ball clubs right now. Anderson is out on top, 65-56. We still have 106 left to play. There's a look at the Wallace bench. They look a little uh, dejected, like you said. But on the other hand, uh, the Anderson crowd can smell victory, Bob. They can feel it in the air. Wallace. Still not out of it, 10 points down, a minute to go. Uh, it's not impossible, but uh, I think you can see it on their faces that I think they know they're beating club tonight. That's right, they've been trying to come back from a 10 point, 12 point deficit the whole second half. And, you know, they haven't been able to do it in the last 15 minutes. I find it hard to believe that they're gonna be able to do it in the last minute of the play. Well, we've got the riot squad. Yeah, I think uh, they're coming down to make sure we have no problem after the game and people running on the floor. It could be our escort out of here tonight. <laughs> Oh boy, and what's happening tonight after the game? Well, we won't talk about that, but it's time for us to have a little bit of fun down here. Yeah, not on the air anyway. Okay, Lane is at the charity strike. He's going to go with his second free throw, and it's going to fall. 
So Lane now has nine points. The Hornets are down by 10. Calvin Douglas checks in for Troy Douglas. Brian Asbury will trigger it in at the far end. Walsh going to really have to come down and put it up in a hurry. Johnny Ford outside, yes. 18 Johnny for Ford. Troy Lewis. They got the advantage again down. Watch the foul. Scott Lewis. Easy bucket. Scott Lewis. Got to bounce it up on him. Scott Lewis has six. Tell us Frank, baseline, won't go. Can't get his own another, rebound. He had another Lewis is on court again. They just didn't stand. 40 seconds. Look for Anderson to take some more time off. Wallace up with the ball here. No foul call. Johnny Fort underneath. He gets it to fall. Wallace has got this lead cut to eight points with 23 seconds left. Like we're gonna have a timeout. No timeout. Wallace can't get the timeout, so Anderson inbounds it with 20 seconds to play and an eight-point lead to foul on Rene Glover. Looks like Coach Smith wanted a timeout, Bob, and he couldn't get the assistant's attention. And what it what it amounts to is that Wallace had to use a foul to stop the clock. And there's a shot of the Anderson crowd. A sea of red and green here at Mackey. They sense it. 68-60. Anderson out on top with 17 seconds left to go. Troy Lewis has a few words with Johnny Fort. There's Norm Held. As we mentioned, he uh, ruptured an Achilles tendon. So he's uh, got himself a little limp there. The Hornets quickly down court. Johnny Fort, yes. Johnny has 22 now. The Hornets are down by six. Eight seconds left. Lewis to Lane, he gets fouled. Lane gets fouled. Looks like Lewis got fouled about three times bringing that ball up the court, so officials didn't want to call it. <laughs> Looks like it's a year reunion here, Bob, next weekend in Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Well, Norm Held likes those odd years, 79 and 81. He was in the state finals, and now he's going to do it once again in 1983. Three seconds left to play. Troy Lewis checks out of the game. I might add that in 1981, the last time that Anderson went, he did a very good Andrean 59er ball club down here in Lafayette that year. We're going to let the crowd tell the story here, Phil. That's right. I think also Anderson just pulled out a couple of their starters, and they got a pretty good ovation from their fans here tonight. Lane cans the first one. He now has 10 points. Three seconds left, 69-62 Anderson. The only thing in doubt right now, Bob, is the final score. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats for the award ceremony. This is all the motion. Please remain in your seats for the award ceremony. The Anderson Indians in total control here. 70-62. They're going to win this one. Johnny Fort with the last shot, and it'll go. 70-64 is going to be your final. So your final score, the championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State is 70-64 to in favor of Anderson over the Lou Wallace Hornets. We'll be back with some post-game activity after this. As soon as Kevin Medved is ready, we're going to go down to him. He's with winning coach Norm Held. Let's go down to Kevin Medved. Kevin? Well, I got 
got full storm out here with the Victoria semi-state Indians here. So it's a great day, what can I say? I thought we played a very good ball game. I thought we played an excellent defensive ball game. Yeah, I think you shut down Johnny Ford yeah. real well. We shut him down. I thought we shut their board game down. We, I think we probably out-rebounded him in the game. I felt like that was an important uh, phase of the game for us. And of course, we had Troy Lewis. Troy Lewis scores 30 points and uh, 10 or 12 rebounds. Everybody thinks that's a spectacular game, but that's just a nice work for him, well, right? We just kind of expect it out of him anymore. He's just done a great job for us, but the role players played well tonight, too. John Harder was very sick between games. He vomited up his dinner. Uh, we didn't know whether they were going to be able to play him or not. And I thought he played a great game under the circumstances. I was impressed with Larry Lane off the bench. He's a scrapper. He really is. Court. He's got a lot of heart, and he's tough. He's, 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 he's a tough kid, hard-nosed kid. Yeah, the coach, you're no stranger going down to uh, NDR. You've been there before. We've been there a couple of times, so we're looking forward to another trip. Well, Coach, I know you've been in front of the cameras all night. Good luck to you. I hope you take it on next week down in Indy. Okay, Kevin, thank you very much. Uh, Norm held the winning coach, and uh, as Kevin said, Indianapolis is no stranger to him. He's been down there in 79 and 81 and came up short. And, you know, personally, Phil, I guess we have to root for Anderson next week. Anderson played a fine ball game here tonight. They, they, had, they came out and did what they had to do. Trey Lewis, what can you say about him? He expected him to score 30 points a game, and he got his 30 again tonight. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna keep it here till we're gonna go to the hour. We're gonna keep it here till uh, about nine o'clock, and we're gonna hopefully get some player interviews and uh, talk with some more people downstairs. And we're gonna keep it here for a while so we can talk about this championship game and. Uh, Norm held a, a big moment for him down there, and uh, I'll tell you, a nicer man I don't think you'll meet. A nice man and a great basketball coach. He's making his third trip now down to uh, Indianapolis. And I'll tell you what, uh, this is just a heck of a ball club you got out here. I'd be no surprise to me at all if they won it all. Wallace has nothing to be ashamed about. They've had a great year. They uh, won the big game. They won the regionals this year. First time down here in 30 years. They played a great ball game. Uh, they just lost a little, a better club tonight. Well, you you got a good point there, Kevin. Uh, we're going to be right back here in a moment to take a look at some halftime stats and chat a little bit more about the post-game activities. We'll be right back. Tonight at 9. And we're back here at Mackey Arena where the Anderson Indians will make yet another trip to the state finals in Indianapolis. The final here was 70 to 64 in favor of the Anderson Indians. And uh, Kevin Medved is down on the floor. He's going to see if he can uh, corner Troy Lewis. And uh, we're going to see if we can get a few words with Troy. So we'll keep it here and wait till Kevin gets him rounded up. But uh, I'd like to go through some of the scoring right now. We'll start with the victorious Anderson Indians. Troy Lewis led the way with 32 points tonight. Chipping in with 15 was their big center, Steve Johnson with 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 points off the bench. Number 43, Larry Lane, played a real strong game this evening. With four points was John Harder. You heard Norm Anderson say that kid was sick. He had a little problem keeping his food inside, and he got a little sick after the game this morning. But uh, he played his heart out this, this evening, and he ended up with four points. Scott Lewis had six, and David Jackson had two points for Anderson. For the Lou Wallace Hornets, they were led by Johnny Fort, who had 24 points. Uh, he hit a lot of his points late in the ball game when he was trying to rally the Hornets back. So Johnny finishes with 24 points. Tellus Frank had just four points for the Hornets. He did not score in the second half. Tellus Frank still did not score in the second half a key. It was very much so a key, Bob. Earlier in the first half, as I said before, Tellus Frank had two real nice plays underneath where he rolled from a high post down to the baseline and was able to score. Unfortunately, in the second half, New Wallace was, was, wasn't able to get back into that same style of ball play. Uh, they got themselves in a position where they were down by a few points. 
and they started to really press. They started to throw off some shots that they probably should have taken, and they just weren't able to, you know, put it all together tonight. Well, as we said, Tellus Frank scored just four points, and those were all in the first half. Renee Glover also had just four points. Brian Asbury and I, I'd have to take him if I had to choose an MVP for the Wallace Hornets in this evening's ball game. I would say it would have to be Brian Asbury. He finished with 19 points, and Phil, he also played a great game. Bob, Brian Asbury really played his heart out in these two tournament games. Um, he really worked hard on both ends of the court, and fighting for good offensive positions, pulling down rebounds when they needed rebounds. You know, if there was an alternative team, I'm sure he'd be on it. Okay, Phil, uh, let's go back to more scoring for the Wallace uh, Hornets. Troy Douglas finished with nine points this afternoon, and our producer, Louis Van Vlyman, has got a final score for me. Floyd Central beat Washington, and that final is 56 to 54. So at Terre Haute, Floyd Central is your winner of that regional by a score of 56 54. And we'll pass along a few more finals as we get them for you. Now, looking back at the Hornets, they also got four points from Johan Smith, who came off the board. So the Wallace Hornets just uh, didn't have it in the cards this evening as they lose this championship game of the Lafayette semi-state by a score of 70 to 64. I've got some unofficial statistics, Bob, that I'm sure are going to be surprising. Okay, Phil, I'll tell you what, before we go to that, what do you say we go down to uh, Kevin Medved? He's standing by with <laughs> Troy Lewis. Kevin? Well, I got Scott uh, Troy Lewis with me to right here. Uh, he's going to probably be in front of these lights a lot more days to pull it. Uh, his career is over. You guys played a heck of a game today. You you individually, but I mean, as a team, you guys played well. Yeah, the coach told us, you know, to go out there, play as a team. We've been playing that way all year, you know. We worked hard in practice, and it's finally playing off right now. We had uh, a little bit of support of the crowd here, too, tonight, didn't you? A lot of fans from Anderson. Yeah, they, they backed us up real well, and we really appreciate it, too. I, I, I think I'm like everyone else. Every time I saw you with the ball within 10, 12 foot of the basket, I didn't expect you to miss. <laughs> it has been <laughs> It's been a pretty nice year for me within that range, and, you know. Well, 30 but, points and 10 rebounds, uh, great great game for anybody. But that's just an average game for you this year, isn't it? Yeah, like one game I got 34, and Coach Al was my worst game of the year. No, so, I, you I know. don't know. That's, <laughs> that'd be pretty bad for a worst game for anybody. Uh, if I've been asked this question, is any thoughts on uh, college next year? Yeah, I'm um, thinking about coming here to Louisville, maybe Syracuse or West Virginia, you know, them four. So no, no yeah, definitely no commitment right now, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, sorry, I'll let you get back to uh, your festivities there. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Good luck down in uh, Indy next week. Uh, I think you guys are going to take it all. All right, thanks. So good luck to you. I'll go back upstairs now to Bobby. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot, Kevin. Thanks a lot. Good job there with Troy Lewis. We have some more finals from uh, some of the semi-states. Marion beat DeKalb to win the Fort Wayne semi-state by a score of 64 to 63. Once again, Floyd Central won the Terre Haute semi-state, and that final there was 56-54. My producer, Louis Van Vlyman, tells me that Connorsville beat Newcastle tonight. Connorsville beat Newcastle, and that final was 70-57. to So it's Connorsville 70-57 over Newcastle to win the Indianapolis semi-state. So uh, next week in Indianapolis, you will have Connorsville. You're going to have Floyd Central and Marion along with the Anderson Indians. So uh, it's going to shape up as a, once again a good final down there in Indianapolis. And you will see all the action right here on Channel 50. We'll have all three games for you next week from Indianapolis. And we'll tip it off about uh, 10 in the morning next week. So uh, be sure you're with us then. We hope uh, you've enjoyed all the festivities here. And we're going to keep it here, as I said, for a little while. As we talk uh, post-game activities here, we have six minutes, and uh, we talked earlier about the Hornets. They were a team that played in spurts, and you know the competition, once you get here at the Lafayette semi-state level, you just can't play in spurts and win, and that's what happened to the Hornets, Phil. Well, Bob, I think you have to remember that we had the two teams we had here playing tonight are both ranked high in, in the state of Indiana over the last basketball season. The Wilds coming in this game knew it wasn't gonna be any kind of a pushover, and they really are going to have to put out a, super, a superb effort in order to take home a victory. Um, they just didn't have the horses tonight. 
the better ball club apparently came out on top and you know as we've talked about you know i'm gonna wish them well down in indianapolis next saturday okay we're gonna take a 60 second time out and we'll come back to mackey arena right after this and welcome back to mackey arena let's go back down to kevin who's with steve johnson i got uh steve johnson with me here the uh, leading rebounder for the anderson indians Steve, congratulations, you played a five game. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot, it feels good to win. Oh, I bet it does. Uh, you wouldn't intimidate at all, were you, by the mm. big Wallace fellow? No, the more uh, the more I thought about him, the more it encouraged me to play, and that's what I did. Well, I tell you, I, I saw your head way up there above that room on a couple of occasions, and you took the ball down, and you kicked it out fast to Scott Lewis, and I uh, scored a lot fast breaks that way. Oh, yeah, uh, they were really uh, not good uh, transition to defense, and we took advantage of that and just ran it out, and that's how we won the game. Did you feel you, had, you were a step quicker than uh, Wallace? Well, we knew they were uh, a bit quicker than us, but we took advantage that they weren't disciplined like we were, and we won the game. Yeah, well, you guys are a well-coached well team, but uh, how about uh, the guard play? You guys stopped, uh, defensively anyway, you stopped uh, Johnny Ford, uh, the parade All-American. Yeah, uh, we didn't think we'd have a chance to stop him, but when David Jackson gets his mind on it, he can do it, and he oh, did. Okay. So uh, you'll be making your first trip down to Indy next week, this huh? This is my first trip, and I'm loving every bit of it. That's right. That's right. Okay, we're... Uh, where are you going to school next year? Any plans yet? Well, I'm thinking of going to South Plains in Texas, but I'm really not too sure right now. Well, okay. Thanks for stopping by, and good luck, you guys. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's go back upstairs. Okay, thanks a lot, Kevin. Uh, we're going to have a look now at the final stats here of uh, this championship ball game. Phil, we'll throw it over to you for that. All right, Bob. Uh, Anderson really shot well in this game tonight, hitting on, uh, let's see, 27 of 51 field goal tries for 529, or 52%. Wallace, on the other hand, only connected on 31 of 64 attempts for 45%. Not a bad shooting night, but you know when you got a team that's shooting over 50%, there's not much you can do. As far as rebounds are concerned, Anderson was able to control the board, just like Steve Johnson said. Uh, they out-rebounded the Hornets 43 to 31, so there was a 12 rebound margin there. Turnovers, Anderson turned the ball over 13 times. Wallace turned it over only seven times. But the biggest statistic that really tells about this one is the free throws, Bob. Anderson shot 15 more free throws than the Hornets did. Okay, we're getting ready to close it up here from Mackey Arena 1983. I want to remind you to join us next weekend for the state finals live from Indianapolis. But before we leave Mackey Arena, I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart the following people who have put in a full day's work. And our field producer here at Mackey Arena, Louis Van Vlyman, a good buddy over the past years. We've had the joy of working together on numerous occasions. Our director back at the Channel 50 studios, another fine young man, Dave Campbell. One of my main men over at Channel 50 pushing the buttons this afternoon, Drew Previs. On audio, Bouncing Bobby Anton. On videotape, another young man who's worked hard over the past few years, and I've had a pleasure to work with him, Steve Meyer. On our graphics, perhaps one of our smarter students and another fine worker, Debbie Gamalowski, our assistant producer, my right-hand man at Channel 50, Rich Underwood, our assistant director back at the studios, John Bufus. Production assistance tonight provided by Jerry Bailey and Steve Sopko. Statistician Bill Marvel. Bill, thanks for all the hard work. And also a special thanks to my two partners with me here this afternoon and this evening, Kevin and Phil. Once again, the final score here from Mackey Arena. The Anderson Indians win the Lafayette Semi-State 764. For the crew, I'm Bob Alvarez. Good night, everybody. Acquisition and broadcast of this evening's championship game of the Lafayette Semi-State was made possible through grants from American Savings and Loan Association of Munster, Indiana, Hook Dependable Drugs, Pepsi Cola Bottlers Company Incorporated of Munster, Indiana, and Don Powers Agency Incorporated of Munster, Indiana.